All right, everybody good with that example? All right, so as, as I promised you, I, I've classified, and this is just my making stuff up, so you won't see this in any book. Um, I've classified the, the types of loop invariants into uh, fairy godmother, more of the input, more of the output, narrowing the search space, shrinking the input, and uh, I threw in system invariants there. And so we'll just go through these and we'll see examples of each. And, uh, and uh, on, on a test, if I'm making you come up with one, it's gonna be one of these. And in, in a very natural way. And if it's something really not one of these in a natural way, then I won't make you do it yourself. All right, so, so this one is just kind of what we said before, right? You fly into the top of a loop invariant and you ask the fairy godmother something really weird that you might want and see what happens, right? And so I was at a, a math conference actually up in the mountains of Germany within a big castle with lots of cake. It was fun. And somebody over the cake asked this problem. And so then I thought of loop invariants and um, very quickly I got this solution. So I think it's a fun problem. All right. So you, what you have is a round lake and you are swimming in the lake and the monster is on the shore of the lake and uh, the, the monster wants to eat you. And uh, you can run infinitely faster than the monster. So if you're on shore and he's not there, then you can get away, right? But the problem is if he's waiting on shore, when you land on shore, shore you get eaten, right? So there, you know, here is just, right, he's going to come over and he's going to try to eat you, right? Now, uh, the problem is uh, he runs four times faster than you swim, right? So, um, so for example, let's assume that the circle has radius one. It doesn't really matter because it all scales. Um, and you swim speed one and it's going to take you time one from the center, right? On the other hand, uh, he only had to run halfway around because, and you know, I, we're gonna all assume that you start by swimming away from him. And uh, so his, he has to run a distance of pi and his speed is four and that's less. And so he eats you, right? Everybody see this? And, and so, any ideas of how you might solve this? Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. But one sort of step up, if you're actually doing this yourself and panicking, the strategy might be always swim to shore but but as he runs always swim away from him right so you're going to do some sort of spiraling and uh that's probably what we're going to do and what probably works i don't know but you know analyzing that would require a certain amount of calculus that we're not up for right so we're not going to do this by calculus and uh all right so yeah here you swim and he runs back and forth trying to catch you and you try to get to shore. Can you get away? Right? So precondition, you're somewhere in the lake and he runs four times faster. Post condition is you get to shore without him there. Uh, measure of progress can be how far you are from the center. Uh, right? Your loop invariant. Now this is where the fairy godmother comes in. Right? So Suppose you have some distance from the center. So you're, you're on that circle, right? And the monster's somewhere. Where do you wish the monster to be? Behind you, right? Now you might say, 
you want him to be, you know, gone somewhere far away. But you know, he's that's beyond what we can ask for, right? So we're going to ask our loop invariant is that if you draw a line from where you are to the center and continue it on, he will be as far from you as possible, right? Everybody, that's what we want. So uh, everybody got our loop invariant. So now we are your our jobs are to establish the loop invariant and maintain the loop invariant while making progress and then getting the post condition from it. Right? Everybody right? All right. So how do how do we establish the loop invariant? Right? Maybe when you first see the monster, right, he's a few inches from you on shore. So how do you get opposite from him? Brilliant. The answer was don't panic. Just don't try to solve the whole problem. Right? Your only goal is to establish the loop invariant. Right? In fact, often, like here, you want to kind of forget what the big problem is. Right? You just, your goal is to establish the loop invariant. And as stated, the one method is you. Is you just um, um, right? This, like I love zero, so you go to the middle, right? And you can casually move to the middle because when you're in the middle, kind of by definition, he's opposite from you, right? Everybody, very good answer. All right. All right, so now how are we going to maintain this? All right, so like you know, we did make progress and then get back on the loop invariant, it's the same. There's there's sort of two issues here. The one is maintaining the loop invariant, and the other is making progress, right? And we can kind of think about those uh, differently, right? So first, let's just think about uh, how to, um, right, right, how do you maintain this loop invariant? You, you're on this circle, you're not even trying to make progress right now, is whatever way he swims, you swim the opposite direction, right? Everybody buy that? Now, can you maintain that? Can you keep opposite from him? Right? When can you and when can't you? If you're by the shore, can you do it? No. But if your circle is smaller, you can do it. And if you want to bring some geometry into it, right? How long can you do it? Right? Let's, let's, man, I put a lot of things in the slides. So, so here's just sort of a, of a picture, right? So he moves some distance d, and uh, what's my distance? Well, they're sort of similar triangles, right? And so you scale it down. It's it's uh, the d times one equals r times d, right? And since he moves four times faster, right? then um, what you need is that the radius is less than a quarter, right? It kind of makes sense. As long as the radius is less than a quarter, then your, the radius of your circle is a quarter of the radius of his, his circle, and so you can, can do the same swimming, right? Does that make sense? Everybody good? All right. So, so as long as the radius is less than a quarter, we can maintain the loop invariant, right? And can we make progress, right? Well, since the circle is the circle smaller, then you have extra speed, right? And you can use some of that extra speed to move outwards, right? So we can maintain the loop invariant and make progress as long as the circle small. 
right? So, um, so now we want to think, everybody good so far, right? So now we want to think about, well, what's our extra condition going to be? And uh, the, uh, what we, the miracle is we want to be on shore, right? But that doesn't feel like it's happening yet. So instead, why don't we exit the loop when uh, we don't know how to maintain the loop invariant while making progress anymore, right? So basically, we're going to exit the loop when we get to the quarter mark, all right? So here's our, our exit condition is that uh, when, we, when we reach the quarter mark. So if we, if we uh, haven't exited, then we're not at the quarter mark and we can keep doing this, right? Does that make sense? So here we can maintain the loop invariant using the fact that we haven't exited, right? Using the fact that the radius is small, right? All right, so now when I'm at the quarter point, what do I do? Now you swim for it, right? Now we're saying we have the, what do we have for us? We have the loop invariant is that he's opposite me. The exit condition is that I'm at the quarter mark, right? And to get the post condition, I just swim. And, and you do the math and now, right? You, you're only going three quarters of the radius, right? So it only, it takes you less time than, than the monster. All right, everybody buy that? It's a good puzzle, right? All right. Oh, 